This is Heidi Fang for MMA Fight Corner with Damian Maya, who's fighting Jake Shields in the main event at UFC Fight Night 29 this Wednesday. It'll begin airing on Fox Sports 1, 4 p.m. for the main card on Pacific Time and 2 p.m. Pacific Time for the preliminary card. So, Damian, you're fighting back in Brazil just for the second time with the UFC. Uh, it's very close to Sao Paulo where you are. How much of an honor is it for you to be in the main event? It's it's a great, great honor, you know, to be in my city and and to be a main event. You know, uh, I'm like this this facility is 15 minutes away from my house, and you know, I born maybe half an hour away or 40 minutes away from this facility, so. Uh, it's it's a great and, and and a great energy to be here. What is it like for you to be back home for these fights? Do you find that there's a lot of pressure for you to make sure that you put on a performance for the fans? What is the overall feeling for you? Yeah, for sure, there's a lot of pressure, you know. But our sport is all about of pressure, and uh, you know, I I know how to deal with that. And now, you know. Many of the people that will be there, you know, in, 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 on Wednesday will, you know, they are my friends. I know them. They are students. They, they training and, and even families, family. So, you know, this, I think this pressure, you know, other than anything will, will push me forward. You notice a lot of the time that the Brazilians tend to have a huge home crowd advantage and can usually finish their fights there. It's not too often like an American can come in and beat a Brazilian on Brazilian turf. Uh, what do you attribute that to? Uh, I think, you know, it's just experience, you know. I think, uh, like, we, we, when we, we're from Brazil, we're more, we're more used to go to, to North America to fight, like to U.S., Canada. We're traveling a lot. And we gotta use it. Uh, you know, the American guys and the North American guys, they are, they are getting used it right now. And I think it, this is just a matter of time, you know, when they, they get used it, you know. Jake is very experienced fighter. He fought all around. So I don't think it will be a big problem for, for him. But some, some guys, you know, they never travel to other countries to fight and sometimes, you know, they don't know well how to deal with the food, with the jet lag and, and the traveling. So um, that can be hard. But I think it's it's matter of time, you know, because UFC is going all around the world right now. And, you know, I, in a couple of years, I think all the fighters, they, they will, will, will know how to deal with, you know, fighting uh, abroad. The last time that you fought in Brazil, you were able to submit Rick's story in the first round. How do you follow up that performance? How do you try to make it as as exciting as you did last time for the fans? You know, I I train. You know, I train very hard. You know, I train very focused ahead, and I try to get better at every camp. And this is no different right now. You know, after Rick's story, I had one fight in Vegas that I did well against John Feature. And I hope, you know, I would, I would did even better this time. You mentioned your opponent, Jake Shields, how accomplished he is in grappling, jiu-jitsu. He's a former champion with different organizations. What do you think about him overall? What's your overall impression of fighting Jake Shields? Yeah, like you said, you know, he has many, many, you know, uh, uh, how, how can I say he's, he's a former strike force champion. He won tough, tough guys, like, for example, the, the former interim champion in the UFC, you know, Carlos Cohn did. He won, uh, great people like Dan Henderson, you know, he fought middleweight also, like I did, and welterweight. And he did it pretty well, I think, you know, in his career. Uh, and I, you know, I, I think it's, it's a very, 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 uh, big challenge for me to fight him. Uh, even if he's in Brazil, you know, I think it's, it's a big challenge as a fighter that I consider like, like 50 50, you know, uh, uh, I wouldn't bet, you know, of course, uh, I'm very confident, but, you know, I, I know, uh, he 
can do pretty well. You've mentioned on the UFC website that in the where it asks who is your hero, you list Hicks and Gracie as your hero. What do you think about the fact that Jake Shields actually trained with him for this uh, fight to prepare for you? Uh, I don't think you know he trained with Hicks, so I think he, maybe he, he he came there before to to give some. You know, training, but, uh, I, I, especially because Hickson is in Brazil right now, he's living here. So maybe he went to his academy in, in US, but Hickson, he, the last like four or five years, he has, you know, been living in Brazil. Right. I had seen that on Twitter. He had put that, uh, Hickson came down to the academy. So maybe he showed him some tips. Yeah. Maybe he, he, he lives in California. Maybe he was in his academy, you know. And, and did some training there, and, and maybe Hickson was there for a while. Do you have any thoughts about him working maybe with Jake or showing him anything with the jiu-jitsu before the fight? Uh, yeah, I have a lot of things in my mind, but, you know, it's, I, I have all my strategy read done, but, you know, that, that's I, I can't say. Did you bring any uh, special sparring partners in for yourself for this fight? Special? Uh huh. Like anybody to uh, specifically prepare for Jake? Uh, no, you know, I basically it's my the same team that I had for the last three fights, and uh, you know it's it's working, and you know I keep the same team, and my manager Eduardo is taking care of everything he's doing, like he's being our head coach, you know, and and send, you know. All the the training camp and and to the the coaches and we're doing pretty well. I think you know I'm gonna keep that. Neither of you have ever been submitted in your MMA careers. Uh, Jake has a great chin. What do you think your advantage is in the fight? Yeah, I think you know I have more uh, grappling experience. You know I, I've been competing a lot in grappling and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And submission wrestling, you know, I ha I have a lot of, you know, wrestling, uh, uh, I mean, grappling background and I think this will be my advantage. And now that you're at welterweight here, you're gone on a streak of 3-0. and If you beat Jake, where do you see yourself in the division? If, if I beat him, which is like sometimes that I need to be focused on, in, in two days, you know, to, to beat him because that's the main goal right now. But if I do, you know, I'm going to fight for the title. Uh, how many fights maybe do you think you are away from getting a shot at the title? I hope I hope if I win this one, you know, uh, this was the, the last one. I have just one more question. I was reading an article uh, about Hoist Gracie. And he was telling uh, MMA Fighting, saying that he thought it was bad for his family to start training in other areas like boxing and wrestling um, because they were getting away from their Brazilian jiu-jitsu roots and that they should continue always training with what they're good at. And maybe that's why they're losing fights lately. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that statement? And do you think it's you know that important for... Guys like yourselves that are a true grappler to always stick to training in that area. Uh, I think the problem is not to train in boxing or Thai boxing. You know, I think it's good to train in boxing or Thai boxing. Uh, the thing is how you. The problem is some people they want to be like average fighter. For example, they're very good in jiu-jitsu, and they want to do. They want to be very good in boxing and and very good in Thai boxing, and I think that's that's uh kind of, you know, uh, for me, it's, it's not the, it's, it's not the, the, the most part, smartest thing to do. If you're very good in something, you need to train the other things, you know, to, to get in your, in your, in your, in, in the, in the area that you better, I mean, like, if you're very good in jiu-jitsu, like world champion, you, you, you can train in boxing, but all, 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 a lot of boxing, boxing with transitioning, not just pure boxing. A lot of type boxing with transitioning, and of course your focus will be in grappling. And even when you train boxing, you need to train the transitions, not just pure boxing. And the the, the mistake I think what Hoisey wants 
what voice means and is that people, you know, they go and, and they're very good in, in jiu-jitsu, for example, and they go when just boxing, like pure boxing, pure Thai boxing, and they're not connection, you know. And if you, I, I train boxing, but I'll, I'll also always, you know, when I train boxing, I do, I train with the connections nowadays, like I try to, to shoot for the takedowns and clinch and, and it's, it's not boxing, but it's, it's a boxing for my jiu jitsu. I think that's, you know, the smartest way to do. Excellent. Thank you very much again, Damien, for your time. Uh, we'll wish you all the best of luck here against Jake Shields at UFC Fight Night 29. And again, that's in the main event. Watch this on uh, Fox Sports 1 at 4 p.m. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi. Thank you very much.